Today, we are looking at the Rodecaster Video, a brand new video switcher from Rode. We'll be talking about the pros and the cons, all to find out if it's right for you. All right, now before we get into everything, I just wanna give a real quick disclaimer that Rode did send me this product. However, they are not paying me anything and they have no control over what I say. They don't get to see anything before it goes out. Um, I just got to check out the product a little bit early and I have it to make some reviews on if I want to. And I thought it would be good to make some content around because it's a pretty interesting device. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's start off by talking about the pros by really breaking down what this thing even is. At the end of the day, it's essentially a glorified video switcher, but it does have some cool tricks up its sleeve. You can actually go in here and mess around with different audio plugins and media and green screen effects and all types of stuff. So let's take a look at the back here. We have a bunch of different ports and this is where you connect everything. Right off the bat, we have these uh, two combo jacks. This is going to be either XLR or quarter inch. You can do two instrument cables, two XLR cables, whatever you wanna do. And this is pretty cool. Let me go ahead and kind of show you guys uh, if I hop over to the app, I can go into our little audio mixer here and we can see the different channels that I have. Right now I'm just talking into this little uh, wireless mic, but what I can do instead is switch on over to this bigger mic over here. And you guys can see now I'm talking into a a little bit of a higher quality microphone that's running into the board right here. And this is reflected as audio source one. But next to this, I do have uh, audio source two. Let me show you guys what that is. So I'm actually able to run my guitar into this thing, which is pretty cool. Let me go ahead and show you guys the little audio mixer again. And I'm just gonna temporarily mute my mic and unmute the guitar. Let's go ahead and talk about the overall control layout so you guys can kind of get a gist of what it is that I'm doing while we go through this review. So right down here is going to be uh, your camera sources, one, two, three, four, five. If I go ahead and select camera one, for instance, and cut to it, you'll see it is switched. I'll cut back and we're back on camera four. Then we have camera two over here, what's up? Camera three is actually a screen recording that I'm sending to this from my computer. Camera four is the top down shot, which you guys will see a lot of. And of course we have camera five, which is this front shot, hello. Top layer over here is our scenes. So beyond just having these inputs here, we can also create combinations of these and add in videos and graphics and all that. So let's go ahead and cut to scene A and you'll see it's changed up. We have a picture in picture effect going on here in the corner. Let's go ahead and switch to scene B now. And now we have a lot going on. We have multiple camera sources, a background, borders, layers, everything's going pretty crazy. So you can get really custom with this whole board. And that's really one of the benefits to this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my green screen so that I can show you guys that in action. All right, green screen is up. So now all I need to do is select the camera, choose the green screen effect, choose transparent, and I'll cut to it. Now it's all blacked out. So. The cool thing about this is I can actually now create a scene where I put myself over top of, say, my screen recording. This is gonna be really effective for tutorials and live streams and all sorts of stuff. And while we're over here, let me just kind of walk you through the app a little bit. So it's got this little scene builder here. This is where you can get really customized with building out different scenes. You can import your media and do all sorts of stuff. You also have the audio mixer right here. And uh, if you dive into the audio mixer, you can do all sorts of stuff with uh, messing around with like the EQ or whatever you wanna do to uh, really get in some different sounds for your audio. And one of the other really cool features or pros of this unit is this auto switching effect. So if I go through, um, I've actually already set this up, but I have uh, this camera two angle linked to my studio microphone and uh, this camera five angle linked to the wireless microphone. So let me turn on auto switching. And now that I'm talking into this mic, it's being picked up and switching to this camera, but watch this. 
because I switched into this microphone over here, we're now talking here. Well, let me switch back. Now I'm talking into the front angle again, so it's gonna switch back to this. Pretty cool. I'm actually able to record this whole thing into an external drive and not just record the overall output, but I'm also able to record all of these individual video sources and audio sources as separated files, which means I have full control over editing things however I want to, if I need to. All right, we've talked about a lot of the pros in this device, but it is not without some cons. Let's talk about those. Really the biggest con and potential deal breaker about this device is there is no 4K. So everything that is connected and running through this is having to be sent to it as an HD signal, which essentially means that you're crippling your cameras if you have 4K cameras. And that sucks because it's just one of those issues that if you wanna have the highest quality possible and get the most out of the more expensive cameras that you've invested in, when you start to run it through this device, you are crippling them and the quality is going to degrade, which is frustrating. It's cool that you can do all this stuff, but again, you're just compromising that quality. Now, there are some real benefits to rocking in HD. For example, the files are smaller. Another reason is your cameras may not overheat as quickly um, because they're not having to work as hard with 4K files for long periods of time. So there are some real benefits. Also, streaming. These files are smaller. The, the signal will be more reliable. Um, because it doesn't, you don't need to have as fast of internet speed and all of that. So there are some real benefits. I can totally see HD being more acceptable and okay for live streams. However, this is not just a live streaming device as I showed you guys. We can also do internal recording. And this is really where the 4K or lack of 4K rather starts to become our first roadblock. So let's talk about the second roadblock, which is the USB-C ports. The main issue that I've ran into here is compatibility. What I mean by this is you're looking at a shot right now from the Sony a7C Mark II and it's working great. However, I've also tried to connect to this port right here, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, the InstaGo 3S, my GoPro, the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, none of those worked. And that's because they, uh, the Rode device needs a UVC, like an uncompressed video format. The problem is apparently none of those other cameras I listed have that. So my main problem is I can use all of those cameras with my computer over USB-C just fine. But when I try to plug them in here, I can't. So whether it's UVC or not, my practical experience with it is they don't work. And so that's a little bit of a roadblock. Certainly there are USB-C cameras on the market, like I think some of the Logitech ones that you can definitely use with this, but it is a bit of a bummer to have other cameras that connect via USB-C and are marketed as having webcam capabilities and do work as a webcam to uh, just kind of be blocked here. Moving on, the next roadblock you may encounter is when you try to live stream directly from this device. What I mean by this is not connecting it to a computer, but just trying to use one of the functions of this, which is to fully be able to connect and stream without needing to have a computer. It's really cool that you can do that, and you definitely can, but the issue is when you're live, you may not be able to have certain functionalities like being able to pull up comments and interact with your chat in the same way as if you were connected to a computer. Now, one of the benefits of this thing is you can connect it to a computer and use it as a video and audio source with Zoom, uh, Ecamm, StreamYard, OBS, whatever it is that you may want to use. But the overall con is like if you want to just use the benefit of going live from this thing without having a computer, there are some limitations like the comments and just overall functionalities of the platform. So that's something to consider. Um, you would still you know, I would recommend still probably wanting to run it through something like one of those streaming services. And another roadblock that I've personally encountered is reliability. I've had a couple of issues with this device. It was really unfortunate because this is actually my second time filming this whole video and a whole menu walkthrough. 
I spent about three or four hours the other day recording everything. I was stoked on it, thought it went really well. Um, all to find out that there was some really bad connectivity issues with this wireless microphone to the unit. Here's a few clips of what that sounds like. To have connected to this device, easy way to navigate all that. Let me show you now how to do this common one. So that definitely is impacting my own opinion of how reliable the wireless connections are with this device. I don't know why it went wrong. I don't know why there was these transmission interferences. I'm not sure. I reached out to Rode and we're, we're investigating it, trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, one of the potential issues was firmware on these. Uh, so I have updated them now and uh, I'm hoping that it's gonna work this time around. Uh, I learned my lesson and I'm using the built-in recordings this time because like a noob, I did not last time. Uh, but again, that was me just putting my trust in, in the technology and the products. And unfortunately, they failed a little bit. I did want to bring it up. I'm not trying to be super hard about it, but it's just one of those things that's a real issue. If you plan on using the wireless features, which is one of the pros and one of the key features, um, it's something to be aware of. So hopefully it was just a firmware issue. Hopefully it was just a fluke, but it did impact my own opinion of the device and its reliability. So I wanted to mention it um, because I found it relevant to me and it might be relevant for you. Another roadblock that I've experienced is just the overall uh, intuitiveness. Intuitiveness, is that a word? Uh, how intuitive it is to um, learn this stuff. So, uh, you know, if I'm buying a new camera or a new light, um, rather than going straight to the manual, what I like to do personally is just approach the product and see how easy or hard is it to work with the product, to learn it, to use it, uh, and to get the results that I want out of it. Once you learn how to use this, it, it is pretty intuitive. It's just that initial learning curve. You're gonna need to spend some time with it. Ultimately, it's not really a con, it's more just like I wanted you guys to be aware and know that it's hard to kind of just straight up hit the ground running. I ran into a lot of troubleshooting when I went to set this thing up, um, whether it was getting my cameras to connect or uh, getting uh, my guitar cable to connect or getting uh, media onto the device. There was a bunch of different stuff. Um, and, you know, I'll walk through a lot of that stuff in my full menu video. So uh, if you guys do purchase this and want to dive into fully understanding how to get the most out of it, definitely check that video out. Um, but I did want to mention it. If you're somebody who doesn't want to have to learn a bunch of crazy stuff, um, this may not be the best device for you. Um, but again, once you learn how to use it and how to navigate it, the button presses and the sequences that you have to do to get what you want, it's pretty straightforward. It's just something I wanted to mention. And the last roadblock that I want to mention is the price. This thing comes in at around $1,200, which honestly is pretty steep. It's a really great product. You get everything all in one, which is awesome. But the downside is the price because you can get a lot of the same functionality that you get here with separate devices for cheaper. And so that's just something to consider. Do you like the convenience of the all-in-one setup? And is that worth the uh, higher price tag? Ultimately, we have to consider uh, everything that's been talked about. There's a lot of pros and there are some cons and it all just comes down to what is right for you. So let's talk a little bit about who this thing is for. In my opinion, this Rodecaster video is really gonna be best for live streamers and podcasters. And it's going to be best for live streamers and podcasters who are okay with HD. If you're okay with HD and you're a solo creator and you're getting into like maybe gaming or live streaming, or you're running a podcast, and again, you're more of a solo creator, you wanna be able to control everything, this could really impact your workflow in a positive way. It could really streamline the process, keep everything clean and simple, uh, allow you to produce stuff faster, almost like you're editing on the fly. Um, all of those are really great. And I think that if you fall into that category where you're okay with DHD, and you're more of a solo creator, or maybe you are a bigger creator who has a team of somebody who can run it, um, and you're doing live streaming or podcasting, 
I really think this is going to be a great option for you and is ultimately why I decided to make content about this thing uh, because it is super cool. Like I love the overall layout of it and and once it's working and you understand it and can dive into it it can do so much good it's just some of those roadblocks that make me a little hesitant to fully recommend this for everybody because it's just not for everybody now one thing you can do that i haven't mentioned yet is you can plug in uh, another audio source via the usb c's and uh, you can actually have like another roadcaster or like a, a mixing board or whatever and run that into here. Um, but again, if you're gonna go that route, you might as well just potentially get something like an ATEM and then have your audio source and your video source and do it that way, it will be cheaper. So these are just things to really think about. Ultimately, uh, I really think it's more geared for solo creators and creators that are okay with HD quality. Um, the, the downside is personally, I think more and more people are moving to 4K we want the higher quality. Um, we don't want to downgrade the cameras. Let me just get this out of the way as well. 4K is not everything. Really what it comes down to is like lighting and audio quality and all of that. So 4K is not everything. But I think where 4K really matters the most for a lot of us creators is we're making long form and short form. And so if you're wanting to make a long form video and then cut out short form clips and stuff, you're going to get a lot better quality if you're doing that in 4K. Um, that's just something I found true for me and something that makes me value the 4k resolution more is for repurposing stuff. Um, you know, so it, it's not for everybody. Not everybody needs that, but it is uh, something worth mentioning. And so all of that kind of factors into the price. Ultimately, when it's all said and done, this is a super cool device. I actually really do like it a lot. And if you can get past some of those roadblocks that I mentioned, then this could be a fantastic option for you. If you end up picking up this device and wanna dive fully into it, or if you're on the fence and just wanna learn a little bit more, I have put together a full menu walkthrough that you can watch right here. I've placed links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay creative. Peace.